So in, in terms of the type of business you want to look for in car hauling, what pays the most? Or do you want to look for like these big commercial auto transport moves or do you want to look for like residential? Like where, where do you want to focus? Or where do you focus? So when I started, you kind of have to focus on the residential moves, right? The, the personal vehicles, unless you have some kind of um, a base that you're coming from or some kind of contract or something, right? Because you're not going to be able to walk into a Tesla factory or a BMW uh, dealership and just get their business, right? There, there's, too, there's too much money involved for them. So what you do is you start dealing with the, the residential customers to build your name. Once you build your name, you now have a guy that's buying a car from, from BMW. You ship his car. Now the dealership knows you shipped his car. So mm. now they know you, right? So now you could approach that dealership and say, hey, look, I shipped your customer's car. If you ever need to ship any more cars, contact me. I'll take care of you. Gotcha. Right? And you kind of grow that way. Is that how you did it? That's how I did it. That's how I did it. Um, and we still do personal vehicles. Okay. Because you got your you got your dedicated freight. So you got your guy like Tesla. We move cars for Tesla. They come out every few months. Um, and it's like a free for all. You got to just move as many as you can in this this time frame, right? But what about when those cars are not available, right? Right. What about when the the auto exchange that you have in, in the Midwest, they're having a dry month and they're not buying cars, right? You you can't, you're not gonna make money if you don't have if you're if you're not flowing. So we still buy leads, our brokers still call leads. Um, you know, we still get regular business from leads. Um, you know, so like I said, our biggest customers came from Leeds. Got you. What's your ratio in terms of like residential to like the big commercial? Like in the beginning, it was like a hundred percent residential. Okay. Right. Then it moved from that to a lot of small dealerships, auctions, um, you know, car collectors. And then from there, after I hit about the three to the four year point, that's when I started getting the 200, 300 dealerships from Ford or the Tesla manufacturer work, stuff like that. So one thing also you got to keep into consideration so people don't get confused is in auto transport, it depends on what side you're talking about, right? Are you talking about the brokering side or the carrier side? So on the carrier side, the dealership work is what you want to do, okay. right? Because you got um, one pick, one drops, right? You don't have to go to... LA, 10 different locations, you know, New Jersey, 10 different locations. You just pick up in one location, one manufacturer, deliver to dealership, do that back and forth, right? Right. Um, when it comes to the brokering side, you actually make more money on the personal vehicles mm. because if you're shipping one, your car one time, you're going to pay an extra $100, $200, right? You're not going to freak out about it. Now, if you're a dealership doing this 100 times a month, you're going to start penny pinching, right? right? Right. So so as a broker, yeah, you get that volume, uh, but you make $50 on a car opposed to 150 or 250 on a car Got when you. it comes to dealership work. Got you. Now, now sales are all is, is always tough, right? Right. How how receptive are people to to new fr uh not freight car auto transport brokers like is it is it easy to crack in or is it like difficult to get through what do you have to tell them in order to you know pitch your business okay so that's a great question because it looks easy it sounds easy right but there's like no information about it. all my students tell me the same thing they're like before you know we we took your course or you, you start we, we took your mentorship we tried figuring out on our own but there's nothing you could find on there right it's tr i've thousands of dollars it cost me to figure all this out um so and if i had never worked at that company where my neighbor took me i still wouldn't know how a car moves right right a lot of people in trucking don't know how car moves right so it, it's tough if you have the sales part of it is is sales like anything else right you have a lead you have a customer no matter what they're gonna ship their car the question is, are they going to do it with you or somebody else? Right. Right. That car needs to move. It needs to get out the auction. It needs to get out of the manufacturing plant. So the good thing is, is that if you do know sales, you know how to explain things to people and your customer service is good. You're willing to pick up the phone and deal with problems at 10 o'clock at night. Right. You're not going to have a problem. Right. Because once we show you the system, you just have to repeat it. Right. And we show you from the minute the lead hits your uh, account 
to how you close it, follow up emails, where to get the leads from, you know, um, how to status customers, how to get them to, you know, write reviews, where to write all of that stuff. Okay, right. Okay. So it just depends on your guidance. Um, it's a lot of the biggest problem that I see is, is the patience. People don't have patience, right? They, they get in, they do good for two weeks or three weeks. Now they have a bad week and they're done with it. Mm. Right. And that's that period that I tell all my students. I tell them, look, you're going to hit a period where you're going to be on the fence. You're not going to want to do this anymore, right? <laughs> right, right, right. You're going to go from loving it and thanking me to, to I hate this, right? If you could get past that I hate this period, that's when you really see the fruits of your Right, labor. right. And, and, what, and what are they going to hate about it? What, what's the toughest part? You go, you're just going to have a bunch of customers that you speak to on the brokering side that, you know, that say they're going to go with you and you come into work on a Monday and from Monday to Friday, it's your third or fourth week you're doing this. And you could barely, barely get to close one deal, right? <laughs> so you went from closing 10, 12 deals last week on your third week to now your fourth week where you think you're going to grow and, and you know, you you fell behind. Kind of like how business is, right? Gotcha. It's a roller coaster, yeah. right? You start, you do great. And now all of a sudden you think you're on your way to be a millionaire and something happens and you have to take a step back. <laughs> right. 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 So that's, and, I, and I've dealt with that myself, not only in sales, but in business and in life. It's just how, how it works. You have to manifest this. You have to be, you know, passionate. You have to be persistent and, and hardworking. And if you do those things, you're not going to have a problem. How long did it take you to kind of get into your flow, get, in, get into your zone? And at what point, what, 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 what size was your business and what were you doing at that time to where you knew, like, I got this figured out? So, so the first year I did seven figures, right? In sales and, and, and people hear seven figures. They think that's what you take home, right? Let's clear that up. That's not what you take home. Right. Okay. I don't care who you are. <laughs> so, so, you know, that happened and I'm like, well, I'm what did you take something. home? Let's, let's clear, let's, let's, so let's be specific. my first year I took home about 20%. Okay. 20% of that, which still, it wasn't bad. Not bad. Yeah. It was a big, yeah, big increase. 200. Right. Okay. Right. So from there I was like, okay, I got something. I only have three brokers working for me. And what I did is, is what I tell my students not to do now too, is I jump straight into the carrier side, right? Mm. So instead of giving it a good two, three years to like build it and, and really, you know, mold that business, I automatically jumped to the next thing because okay. I thought I had this figured out, right? Right. And then the carrier side went great, no doubt. But my beard was white when I started. I mean, it was black when I started. <laughs> now it's white, right? The whole thing. Right. right In a right. matter of two years. Yeah. Because you just, you take on too much because you're too ambitious, ambitious to grow. Right. Right. You're like, I'm giving all these cars to somebody else. Let me just haul them. You yeah. know? Yeah. And you see the numbers in front of you, right? So you're making a hundred, two hundred dollars on a car. The carrier is making a thousand, two thousand right. on a car, right? right? So you just jump right into that. That's what I did. And then it went great. My first truck was great. My second truck was, was a nightmare. We bought a truck out of Florida, a Pete, um, bought it for like 50 grand because it was a beautiful truck. No e-logs. Uh, the driver wanted it. So we come back to Jersey and it goes straight into the shop. $40,000 new motor, mm. right? After that, we get it back. Problem, problem, problem. Got rid of it, right? So I took, I took a big loss there. Um, and then what I did is I, I said, you know, forget all of that. I'm going to just go with service trucks from Freightliner. Warranties, that's key. I learned my lesson. This is not a car. You need a warranty on this truck, right? Right. So now I'm growing the trucking side and I'm neglecting my broker side, right? And, and I'm sitting there thinking about it and I'm like, I'm making this much over here. I'm making this much over here. But over here, I have all this liability. And on my brokering side, I have no liability, right? No insurance, no worrying about anyone dying or, you know, none of that. <laughs> right. So what I learned was I need to come back to my brokerage, right? I okay. don't have a CDL. I don't plan on getting one. Um, I have a few trucks that are up and running with the work that I'm giving them. We're good there. Let me focus on my broker side, right? So, so about at my three year point, I, what I did is I went back to my broker side, focused on that, grew that, saw that that's where I want to be. Right. That's where I feel comfortable. And I told all my drivers, look, you have, you have two options. Either, you know, you could buy the trucks outright. I'll still provide you the work. I'll dispatch them for you or I'll go 50 50 with you, you know? So that way you take care of the equipment. 
you're a 50 50 i'll provide all the back end work the loads everything from a to z on the business side you just are responsible of maintaining the truck and making sure the loads get delivered got you 